Be live now, man. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. This is House Corrections and Institutions Committee. It is uh, Tuesday, February 14th. Um, we have with us um, folks from the Department of Public Safety to go over their section. There are two particular items. Um, it's in section 12 and it's on page 61 of our capital three ring notebook. And we have with us uh, the commissioner of uh, the Department of Public Safety that I am going to start with Commissioner Morrison. Um, and then we'll, we'll go from there because you have some folks with you and um, We'll start with you folks, and then we do have BGS here in the room as well in case we have some questions. <coughs> so, Commissioner, welcome. Yes, ma'am. Happy birthday, first and foremost. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's a party day. If you were here... How could you tell it was a party day? Oh, ma'am, I would have been singing. I sing. I like to sing. I would have been singing to you, but uh, I, it looks like you had a grand time, and um, I appreciate you hearing from us. My name is Jennifer Morris, and I'm the Commissioner of Public Safety, and with me today is my Deputy Commissioner, Dan Batesy. And on the screen, I have our Director of Finance and Administration, Rick Hallenbeck, and the Director of the Division of Fire Safety, Michael DeRocher, and our partner in all of this from BGS, uh, Dave DiBiase is, I think he's sitting right over there in the room. No, we don't. You don't have anyone from BGS? Yes, Joe Angel. Oh, oh Joe Angel. Oh, Joe, it's Joe. Yeah. And Eric. And Eric. <laughs> dynamic duo okay so give us an intro here commissioner and then if you need to shift to the folks who are with you feel free to yes ma'am would you like me to share my screen and look at a um a couple of slides with me sure but you may have to be given the authorities for sharing the screen so hang on a second <laughs> Okay. All right. I think I'll be able to do this correctly. You can tell me if you see a. We see it. Do you see the state house? Yes, we yes. do. Okay. Very good then. Um, this is just a, an overview page telling you who is here with us. Colonel Matthew Birmingham will be here, and um, Deputy Commissioner is here in lieu of uh, Kevin Lane today. But that's that's our team. And I am trying to make this advance. And this is just a, a pictorial, a quick pictorial to orient you to some of the things that happen in the Department of Public Safety, specifically what we're here to talk to you about today. Um, we have a discussion about um, HAZMAT, the Urban Search and Rescue Team, along with state police uh, specialty vehicles. And so you'll see that we have divers, we have snowmobile unit, boats, HAZMAT assets, fire safety assets. Um, and uh, urban search and rescue, structural collapse uh, stuff as well. So the special teams facility and storage project has really come a bit to a fever pitch for a variety of reasons. Um, let me tell you what it includes first, and then I'll give a little bit of context about why this has become a front burner issue. Um, when we talk about urban search and rescue, we're talking about Vermont Task Force One, which responds to all major disasters in the state. Uh, it is the primary water and particularly swift water rescue resource for the entire state. Um, and we also respond to uh, assist local departments whenever there's a building collapse, building partial collapse, or fear that a structure is unsafe after either a fire, an earthquake, or even a, a large vehicle driving into a, a, a residence or a building. And there are 90 members of this team who are considered part-time employees and they are led by one full-time director. Um, and then the HAZMAT team is very similar in that their purview is the world of hazardous materials, all the things you don't want uh, to, to get into. Uh, and they respond likewise uh, statewide to emergency calls, whether that's a rollover of a tanker, uh, or, or anything that involves hazmat, uh, white powder in an envelope received at an office building. They partner very closely with law enforcement and also with the Agency of Natural Resources. And there are 35 uh, members across the state that are led by one uh, full-time uh, hazmat chief. 
The Recreational Enforcement Unit of the Vermont State Police uh, handles recreational boating safety on all Vermont waterways um, and also snow machine, uh, snow machine enforcement on vast trails. Uh, so snowmobiles, that would be more uh, this time of year than, than the other. Um, we also have uh, marine assets relative to our underwater recovery team that assists statewide in recovery operations for uh, people who are missing, whether that's a search and rescue mission or a recovery of a presumed body. Um, and then the Division of Fire Safety Williston Regional Office provides code enforcement and investigative services to the Northwest section of the state. And they are currently uh, operating out of leased space in Williston and that will be wrapped into this multi-purpose building. Um, so what, what is the need? Currently, our, our urban search and rescue and hazmat assets are housed in a AOT garage in Colchester at 40th and Allen. And uh, Secretary Flynn has been very gracious in allowing us to uh, build an encampment there, literally. Um, but it is, it is not an adequate facility for a variety of reasons. And we have been asked to find a new solution because they have assets that they want to store in that space. Um, there is no classroom or training area, uh, and the building layout requires equipment to be positioned with a forklift to fit uh, everything inside, uh, which there just isn't enough space and a lot of equipment that's, um, you know, expensive and sensitive equipment is being stored outside. Um, there is no fire protection. There is no sprinkler system or anything in this garage facility. And that is the, that's all our eggs are in this basket of storage. Um, and it is left without the benefit of sprinkler system. Um, and the space itself, which I have toured on two occasions is gross. There is no, the bathroom is, I, the bathroom is inadequate. There is no break space. It's not an adequate facility for, for what they're using it for. The Marine unit um, and our assets related to uh, snowmobiles were supposed to be included in a cold storage solution at the new Williston Field Station. But when they ran into ledge at the site, they had to drop the cold storage from the plans for the new barracks. So the equipment is currently at the existing Williston space and if we can't find a new home for it, then BGS will be unable to sell that building. And that is not the highest and best use of the existing state police house, uh, barracks in Williston. Um, and even if we were to stay there, the, the building is deteriorating quite rapidly there. Um, and we just don't want to hold up the potential sale of that valuable parcel of land. Um, and then the Division of Fire Safety, as I mentioned, we're in a relatively high cost lease space in Williston, and we would propose to wrap this all together. And some of the benefits of co-locating uh, is that we could share spaces like storage, classroom, um, kitchen or locker space, anything like that. Um, and it would improve our communication and cross-pollination of our specialty response teams. Um, and it would also allow the option of secure outdoor storage, which some of these assets are safe to store outside. Not all of them, but some of them are, but they have to be properly protected and with cameras and fencing, et cetera, to prevent vandalism or anything else. So that's the current state that we're trying to address. Um, and I, we've provided a couple of pictures here of how it currently looks at the AOT shed. Um, I'll just let the picture speak because it's, it's a bit of a drag. So that is the multi-purpose storage facility that, um, is, I believe, first on your list. And then the before, we, issue, before we get there? into the field offices, let's just <clears throat> stay with this for the time being. Okay, very good. I, I would ask if Joe has anything to add from what I okay. just reviewed. Okay. Joe, more. you want to come on up? So this is what I'm interpreting the 250000 for the FY24 is planning money, is what I'm interpreting. Um, and that's what I see on the chart on page 62. Joe? Good afternoon. For the record, Joe Ajak. Director of Design and Construction for Buildings and General Services. 
Yes, when you're looking at the capital bill book, um, blame it a little bit on the editors. I think when you get down to the funding source, I think in some cases in the totals, I don't know the right on the tables, believe the Excel spreadsheet the front of your book. <clears throat> However, the dollar amounts listed on FY24 and 25 are correct. And that for 24, we're looking at $250,000 for the special teams to start the planning process of exactly what size this facility has to be and all the components that go with it with all the entities that are coming together and have a best fit into it. Once we can get that resolved and we can move, have an approved plan or approved idea, then we can move forward in the following year with completing the design because we still need to find a piece of property. So once we can start that process, we'd be looking for purchasing property in the next biennium to get that underway. So we can get through halfway through design development before we actually need a piece of property to select to finish that. Because what we're looking at for this type of facility is one of the uh, pictures that the commissioner had, you can see that it's a lot of motor vehicles, some of them were trailers. So, so the best thing to do is to really have a drive through building, overhead doors on both sides so that you're bringing the vehicle in and when you're going to leave you're going to go right behind it sometimes you can stack two vehicles that way it depends on the need of how they're going to go out in a response but those are the things that we're looking at for the special teams so the 250 is really to start the planning process might get you about halfway through any design documents or maybe not would the million would part of that million in fy25 be used for design as well? The, yes, the million and 25, yes, will be used for design. To match the yes. 250. And then once we, if we can find land, so we, we'd go out and advertise for land and then we evaluate land, but we would have the funding to purchase the land at that point. Out of that million? So it would be to complete the design and purchase land possible. Yes. Chip? So um, the land that you would be looking for, would that be near, or you'd be looking near the Williston Barracks, or does it matter, the new Williston Barracks? I want to defer to the commissioner, but I think in the office and with their team, we've been talking about, I think, the Chipman County area. Okay. But how expensive that is, because I think that's the greatest response and having the commissioner weigh in. Okay. Commissioner, you want to weigh in on that? Uh, yes, ma'am. It doesn't have to be Chittenden County. We have tinkered around with other ideas around the central Vermont area, but the reality is that the assets get deployed the most frequently in Chittenden County, um, particularly, you know, when you think about the waterways and um, hazmat spills, the greatest congestion and the highways, et cetera. So it, we are not locked into it being in Chittenden County, but it is the most logical if there were a very strong business case to be made for it to shift, you know, 30, 40 miles in one direction or another, we would be open to hearing that. So, I know, I'm sorry. Go I just ahead. had to follow up. Um, when we toured the new Williston Barracks, I thought that large um, garage behind the facility, heated garage, was going to be this type of storage. A different special teams. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> this part of this got cut out <clears throat> of the original design. This Make is this your cold yep. storage. Okay. Correct. And, the, the, and what was not on the original plan with the Williston site was marine storage, is what it was mm -hmm. labeled. Mm -hmm. So when we were facing into the open bay of that large garage and we were touring the site behind you, that drop off yep. is where that plan facility was. Right. Too much ledge. It was, yes. Got it. it was removed from the project. Okay. Gina, Ben Wayne. I'm just curious about the Middlesex property. If that would be the kind of, you know, install the where the archives where are. Where the there. archives are, that'd be the kind of property that you could, because it's relative. It doesn't have a ton of personnel, and the water issues wouldn't necessarily be a big deal. Don't know if it would fit, but that could. I know yeah. just, we are looking at a planning study of what could fit on that site. Uh, because it is a sloping too. site. Yeah. So. Quick to the highway. Wayne. So in, on, in our book that 
second page here, so that, that million is under construction needs to move up into the top oh, two of the planning side. That's good. I think you the top two lines, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. And the other question I have is um, federal boat grant money, the uh, use of that in any of this project? Uh, yes, sir. The recreational boating grant is able to offset the cost of a percentage of the square footage um, based on what percentage those assets take up. So that's, again, part of the planning process is how many square feet do we need for those assets? And they we can use that resource to pay for a portion of it, but it certainly would not cover the total cost of this much larger facility than just the marine unit. Yeah. Geographically, uh, what kind of area will this, if, if, when it's built, will it serve? And is there another facility in the state that's already built or under consideration? No, this is it. So this is going to serve the whole state? Well, there, let, let, <laughs> it's a little bit of a trick question, right? So there are. Um, Zodiac boats, for instance, that are part of the Swift Water Rescue team, but they're pre-positioned in various communities around Vermont. So it's not not every single asset that DPS owns would be under one roof, but the ones that are centrally stored that are part of where we you know, have been keeping things either at Fort Ethan Allen or at the Williston Barracks would come together <coughs> under this plan. So it's the equipment and only the equipment and our people that are employed in those separate teams that work in those separate teams like you have 90 folks or in the urban search and rescue team those 90 folks can be spread out throughout the state that's correct um within, within the state police ranks no no ma'am those folks are generally um people who are EMTs or into search and rescue, and they have an interest in swift water rescue or, or urban collapse. And they, it's a little bit like being a volunteer firefighter, except they get paid a rate when they are activated and for training. Um, and they're scattered all over the state. I don't know if Director DeRocher wants to, I don't see him anymore. Is he still on? Mike, are you still yeah, on? Yeah, he should be yeah. still on. Right. Maybe we take Commissioner, maybe we could go back to that slide that shows the breakdown of each of your teams. Yes, that one. So when when the folks are dispersed throughout the state, do they have equipment with them or is all of the equipment stored in one spot? Right. Um, this is Mike DeRocher uh, for the record. Uh, Happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, to answer your question, yes, all the team members have equipment with them, but there's also a lot of high tech equipment that is being stored in the facility in Colchester. So it's, uh, it's mixed there. Usually their personal protective equipment is with them, but then the more expensive stuff, um, things uh, that need to be in a controlled environment for heat, like all the air monitoring equipment, SCBAs, all that stuff, that's all stored uh, centrally in Colchester. So I would think it'd be a little difficult if you need some of that sensitive equipment down in Bennington or Brattleboro to get there pretty quickly. That's well, why up north. Right, so we have we have three hazmat command vehicles strategically positioned throughout the state, one's in Pulteney and one's down in Pittsburgh. And so all the high tech equipment is on our command vehicle. So we actually have three command vehicles to address exactly the concern you just raised. And then as far as the USAR assets, I think we have right now actively about uh, 10 or 12 uh, MOUs with participating departments, those being fire departments, where there is a uh, an array of swift water assets that are readily available in those uh, communities that we partner with. So Mary? Um, basically you asked 
just raises the question further that south of Route 4, you don't think of Southern Vermont, Wyndham County, or Bennington. So how long would it take to deploy these materials down to like Wyndham County or Bennington? Not very long because we also have what we call strike teams. And those strike teams are sent out um, for the purpose of getting to scenes in a, rapidly to do a real quick assessment to whether additional resources are needed. So it's also an efficiency and uh, an operational efficiency strategy that has been very successful. So uh, we try to be within an hour response um, to people. That's what the goal is. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm a little confused. And there are two teams in Wyndham County. There are two strike teams in Wyndham County. Is that correct, Mike? I can't answer that. We have um, the hazmat team has a number of what we call strike team capabilities where we roll out like four or five people instead of rolling out 20 people to a scene. So that that is uh, that operational strategy exists everywhere in the state. Um, so we can deploy strike teams anywhere from uh, basically from any location. Um, because of the diversity of the team, the members are scattered all over the state. So if we have an incident down in Bennington, our chief of hazmat is going to try to deploy a strike team with members that uh, reside down in that geographical area. And just for the record, um, I believe that there are MOUs with both Rescue Inc. and Brattleboro Fire Department. In Correct. Area. So we, we have assets all over the state and the response time of people on scene as first responders has not uh, been a concern that has hampered us operationally. Um, when we're talking about the central storage of vehicles, these are not all of the vehicles. These are the vehicles that require storage, vehicles, boats, equipment, um, you know, all, all the things that we were referring to, the SCBA, uh, various meters that read conditions and gases, et cetera, for hazmat, that type of stuff. We have some more questions here, Tristan and then Wayne. Uh, thank you. Back to Middlesex, given the water issues on that site, it lo it's located more of a storage maintenance facility there. Any better use of that site? It could be. Right now we have two wells on that side, site. One has a little bit higher arsenic in it, the other one uranium. Uh, for the person who does our water testing and the likes, if we combine the two into one system, we would meet the state regulation. Little here, little there. So you bring them together and you dilute it and it works its way up. So, oh, wow. But it all depends on where the two wells are located and then where you would build. You know, we might have to drill another well instead. So. But both of those can be filtered out. And you're intersecting with fish and wildlife. Law enforcement. Yes, of course. We intersect with them regularly on search and rescue and, and various other uh, missions, such as on the waterways um, and out on the snowmobile trails. We coordinate with them regularly. Yeah, this is Mike again. If I could also add, we also have 15 decontamination trailers that are strategically placed um, throughout the state, four of them, which are um, located... Uh, south of route four so um we do have th those assets available too that local fire departments can gain access to and i think if i may i'd like to point out that the the issue is is slightly larger than just storage i mean this this facility is envisioned as the place where these special teams would come for training they sometimes do trainings out in various communities but very frequently uh, they train at the, the facility um, and that it would have a classroom and space available for that. So it, it's more than just storage. And as, I, as we mentioned previously, it would also fold in 
the Division of Fire Safety Williston Regional Office so that we would uh, unencumber the funds that are currently going to lease that space. So I need some clarity in terms of the urban search and rescue and the hazmat. What equipment from those two entities would be stored at this regional facility? Oh boy, um, a lot. The, the, we have a um, command vehicle which contains probably half to three quarters of a million dollars worth of very sophisticated air monitoring equipment um, and a lot of sophisticated uh, response equipment. On the USAR side, we have roughly probably 10, 15 trailers. We have eight, probably eight to 10 vehicles. Um, actually, we have 22 trailers and a number of trucks that tow those trailers that are also stored inside. We also have a number of uh, bolts in their trailers and their, all their associated equipment. Um, we have uh, sophisticated communication equipment, a communication trailer. Uh, so basically everything that this USAR team can assemble and leave this facility with to be self-sustained for a period of time. Um, chainsaws, uh, a, a very large technical rescue trailer uh, that is uh, equipped with all kinds of shoring, heavy shoring equipment. Uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on. So you have you have those 90 members who are kind of spread out throughout the state. And if they can start like a search and rescue um, operation, but as they start that, they, they don't have all of this equipment with them. They would have to call it in and ask for it, correct? The team is capable of responding with the equipment that they have to do shoring and so forth, but they could call upon some of their municipal partners uh, for, for additional equipment or staffing if needed. So when would they be calling for the equipment that would be stored in this new facility? Well, we have a number of uh, fire uh, fire incidences where the fire investigation unit cannot either do body recovery uh, because the building is not structurally sound. For all those municipalities that have no access to any of this equipment would call us and we would be able to deploy that equipment to allow for uh, shoring and then body recovery. So those are just one example. Uh, the team is also very active and rapid uh, structural repair work uh, in response to floods and that kind of stuff. Um, so this team that is assembled and the equipment assembled in this main building is capable of responding to these types of incidences. But they also they have a network of partners where if additional resources are needed, they can call them in. And what about the hazmat? What what would be stored there? Same thing. We have our primary command vehicle there, with all with a with a high percentage of our very sophisticated uh, air monitoring equipment and response equipment there. Um, so there's just a fair uh, decontamination equipment supplies to back up. The, um, our local partners. So there's just a lot of supplies there and equipment. I, I, some, I, 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 I just want to make sure we're not getting off track in that we're not proposing a new scheme for common storage. We're just consolidating the what currently exists at the Williston State Police old building with the stuff that's currently in a borrowed space at AOT that we need to vacate and putting it all together. So that really the only change here operationally right. is that we would be shrinking to one square footage footprint 
as opposed to taking up space in two separate locations right now. Mm -hmm. I understand that. It's just, if we're looking for new space, it might be an opportunity to move some of this out of Chittenden County where some of the other episodes are happening in other parts of the state. That's the concern because everything seems to be focused up in Chittenden County and some of the communities that may not have any of this equipment to shore them up tend to be in the outreaches of Vermont. So that's the concern. Uh, John? Could you briefly give us an idea on staffing of these special teams and where they come from and how long it takes them to get out the door, get the equipment out the door? The staffing on the teams right now are pretty full. And uh, for example, on the hazmat team, uh, we have some state employees that are on this team with dual employment waivers. We have a number of firefighters uh, whether they're volunteer or career that are on the team. Um, and again, these folks are scattered all over the state and they're, and they're temp employees. So when they're uh, either at training or, or responding, uh, they're paid at the same rate. They're all hazmat technicians. The USAR team is made up a lot of, um, um, we have a doctor, we have a, a I think we have a veterinarian uh, uh, on the team. We have a structural engineer on the team and we have a lot of career firefighters that are on the team and we have volunteer firefighters that are on the team. So the, there's a, a large array of uh, makeup on these special teams, uh, which makes them so <laughs> successful operationally. Uh, the hazmat team might have a chemist that's on the team also. That didn't quite answer the, the gist of my question. To get this specialized equipment out the door, where is the staff that can actually jump into the truck and go? Right, like, well, earlier I mentioned we had a truck down in Pulteney. So that's pretty accessible for the Southern part of the state. We also have another command vehicle that is uh, located in Pittsford at the Fire Academy. That truck is easily accessible. We have uh, members in Rutland that pick that truck up and run with it. Um, so we have three different command vehicles strategically placed in the state uh, that has membership around those assets that can easily respond and in a timely manner to incidences. Um, and on the swift water side. Your answer. Who's going to drive the truck out of the Williston storage facility? We The team has a number of drivers that can drive that vehicle out of Williston. Um, that was the question. Who's going to drive the uh, vehicle oh, right. out of we, the new storage? <laughs> yeah, how long is it going to take to get there? Uh, not long. Uh, a few minutes. Um, and there's sometimes where there's staff there, um, and it could be immediate, but there, are, there is, uh, we've never had an issue with, with response capabilities uh, when called out. So there's okay. plenty, of, plenty of team members that can drive apparatus and respond and pick the vehicles up. I, I think it bears noting uh, for the committee that approximately 70% of these teams are made up of residents of Chittenden County. So that's a big consideration if you consider moving the headquarters out as to whether or not you will lose team members who have to travel for training or that it creates a longer um, journey to get to where they can respond. It would actually hamper their ability for a timely response. So it, it's a consideration as we, as I listen to the conversation that's happening, I, I'm, I'm sensitive to it, I, I, I hear it. Uh, but we also have to realize that when you're pulling your human resource, which are volunteers, they do get paid once they're activated, but they volunteer to be on these teams. They all have day jobs. Um, we have to be a little careful about not, not moving the base of operations away from where the population base that staffs these volunteer roles are. Well, you probably don't have the staff from Southern Vermont because they have to travel the distance for the training and everything else. So it does work both ways. Sure. 
Is it, uh, it, it definitely is a, a push me, pull you, right? So I have a further question because I'm reading more of the description. There's also the thinking that you might be able to, in the future, accommodate the Department of Public Safety fleet services. What vehicles are involved in the fleet service? Uh, the entirety of the Vermont State Police um, vehicles that are serviced in this half of the state. Uh, I'm not absent the Colonel being on to answer this. I'm not sure that every single vehicle comes to 40th and Allen from around the state, but a good number of the state police fleet come there. Uh, they are operating out of an old horse barn at 40th and Allen, which is not too far from the building we were just talking about that AOT is loaning us. Um, and, and they are uh, constrained on space. And it's a, I'm sure you all have seen those buildings. It's a pretty dilapidated building. Uh, it is definitely on our priority list, but it is not at the same level as this this multi-purpose storage uh, facility, uh, and it is certainly not as high on the priority list as the Clarendon Field Station to replace the Rutland Barracks. So when you're talking about the Public Safety Fleet Service, are you talking about state police vehicles? Because they bring them home, don't they? Yes, ma'am. This is a garage. Uh, Fix them. I know it's a garage. I am here. Okay, go ahead, Colonel. I'm trying to figure out what vehicles are they the tr the vehicles that the troopers drive, or is it something else? Is that you, Matt? Madam Chair, yes, I am. I apologize. I'm on the road. I wasn't planning to testify today, but if you can hear me, I'll continue. Yes, we can hear you. Just identify yourself for the record, yep. please. Yep, Matt. Yep, Matt Birmingham. I'm the director of the state police. Um, so our, our fleet services garage is over in 40th and Allen. Uh, they are responsible for the intake of all DPS vehicles. So every single DPS vehicle goes through that garage for uh, markup, fit up, equipment uh, installation, and a, a large portion of our vehicle uh, vehicles from our fleet go there for maintenance as well. But we also have maintenance contracts around the state at, at private garages. The fleet, the entirety of the state police fleet is deployed across the state. You are correct. Troopers have take home vehicles and many of our special teams vehicles um, are at facilities, not at the fleet. So the only thing that's at the fleet garage are new vehicles that are coming in or vehicles that are being auctioned off or vehicles that are being uh, worked on. Okay, that, that helps. But, but there are four mechanics there and a fleet administrator who have lifts and they do a lot of work there and they are paired up with our radio technology services to install radio communications equipment there as well that helps for that so this seems like a very new endeavor from the department of public safety to build this real consolidated <clears throat> building um <clears throat> i'm also <clears throat> wondering if um you're also going to be doing any training there or anything because I've been hearing some discussion there might be some classrooms that are used for training for special teams. Where does the training happen now? I don't know who would answer that if it's. This is Mike. Okay. Um, on the hazmat team, we train uh, all over the state with fire departments. And we also train with businesses. So the hazmat team um, does a fair amount of training across the spectrum here. And what that does is it provides a lot of our team members. They don't always have to travel up to Colchester all the time. But uh, with that said, we also do a fair amount of training there in Colchester on the grounds there. Uh, there's ample space there to, uh, to run some of our training scenarios there right at the site. Mainly in the summertime, uh, when it's nice out, we can take advantage of that. The USAR team is kind of the same way. Some of their training uh, they can bring to certain areas. They can do swift water training with their MOU partners in different locations. Um, but again, a lot of the membership is... Uh, is comprised up in this uh, area here. And 
a, a little off this, I would also add that the Williston Fire Safety Office is a real busy office that has been strategically placed in Chittenden County uh, just because of the workload that uh, that office brings in walk-ins, permits, construction, uh, plan review, and that kind of stuff. So strategically, that's a pretty important uh, asset to us up in that geographical area. Where is the uh, next Division of Fire Safety Regional Office from Chittenden, from the one in Williston? Where's the next one? Is there one in central Vermont? Waterbury. Okay, that used to be in Barrie, right? Uh, that's correct, and for, yeah. right, and we co-located over to headquarters uh, to save money. Okay. Yeah. Joe. I don't know, Joe. This all came about be for two issues. One was in the Williston facility when we were looking to build at the new site not everything was going to go up there due to cost. So we do have the Marine Division cold storage that right now will be remaining behind in a building that is deteriorating and we are looking to sell because of the value of the property. Or we're going to have to put money into that building that we're going to remain in. The other situation, uh, use our hazmat location, is they're in temporary space owned by Agency of Transportation. Agency of Transportation is looking for their space back because they have their needs for it and are they're looking to construct new. At the same time, uh, the fire service, they're over in lease space at Williston. So this was sort of coming together, looking at bringing them all together into one co-located location building. And that's how this sort of has come about. So you know, it's not Nothing that was necessarily dropped up or, you know, maybe we need a new building and the likes. We're looking to get out of OT space, our old building to sell a lot, and then get a, out of lease space also, and then just bring them all together. How much land are you thinking for something like this? I'm not going to take a guess. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at close enough for that. <laughs> it's worse than that. Where's the uh, public path? <laughs> you know, it, it depends on the layout of the building, the, the piece of property that you get. You know, that also comes into play. So sometimes you're going to buy a larger piece of property just because of the you know, wetlands, climatic soils, and likes of that, or where it's located and the shape of it, hills, the likes of that. So that's where you know, we're looking into the planning study first to get that underway to exactly what is the right fit. And then be looking for searching for land and where that goes and to move into the, into the design process. So the process in terms of the money that's being requested for us and for Marco, the 250 is to go into preliminary planning so that next year when we do our budget adjustment process in the capital bill, even if we do put the million dollars there for next year, coming back the 250 will allow us next January to have a better idea of what would be needed for space for the storage facility and maybe classrooms or whatever and acreage, square footage of the building or buildings and a projected cost possibly. So that next year we can determine whether uh, the full million or more is needed to continue the process. So this is a new project. The first thing you do is put money into planning to see if it's feasible and what the size and potential cost is. Do you have your hand up too? No. no. So markup will determine. So the 250 gets you the initial planning to give us more information come January. And the million in FY25 would complete the planning process and possibly allow to go out and purchase. We'd be looking at moving into design actually and then looking at the site to keep going. And so the reason for that whole layout though is we don't need all the funding this biennium because I can get enough out the door just on the planning but that would be able to continue that process of starting with the design so that we get that 
and find a piece of property. Because otherwise, if I wait a year, there's that gap. If all goes well of getting it up to bid and then the line in place, the planning completed, then there's a potential gap if I don't have that additional funding to wait and start over. But the real decision will be done next January. Or somebody comes out and hits a piece of property and the planning goes smoothly. Mm -hmm. That rarely happens. But, uh, exactly. I can always have, you know, 40 years, why well, could have no good project? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on this one? Okay, let's move on. Okay, I will go back to the slide about the Clarendon project. Um, the Vermont State Police field offices, seven have been replaced or are under construction. Uh, and there are three facilities that are remain to be uh, redone. Rutland, which would then be known as Clarendon, is our highest priority. Uh, the land land has been purchased. It was purchased 10 years ago in Clarendon to replace the barrack. And it uh, this it would the service area would not change. It covers 29 towns in the southwest portion of the state. The current uh, site is not technically in a floodplain, but um, it floods a lot and there's uh, risks being isolated and cut off due to the flooding of roadways that lead to the barracks. Um, and this facility was is a 50 plus year old building uh, that is in, in, you know, it's in need of replacement to maximize our efficiency of operations. Um, and the design cost is estimated at $1.25 million. And I'll let Joe speak to the numbers if you have questions about that. As the commissioner said, um, when we were in construction in Westminster, we went out and purchased the land for this because Clarendon Rutland was the next site that uh, was coming along. We found the lands uh, off of Route 7, 103, where when you go towards the airport, there's a small flat piece of property right there uh, that was purchased. And it's been sitting there ever since. But, uh, at that same time that we were looking at that property, because of the deterioration of the existing building in Williston, it was decided to move that one forward and move faster. And so that's why we went to Williston. We did have uh, a bunch of hurdles in Williston, and it, you know, it's taken up till now to get construction underway. And it is underway, and as the commissioner said, this is next in line now that they're number one priority. And so we'll be going into the properties there and just moving into the design process. The planning part of it is basically done. We're looking to do the cookie cutter approach that we have used at all the facilities except for Berlin. So the 250 would get you to schematic design and design documents? It would be even into design development. It depends on uh, the property and the sewer. When we first purchased the property, we had sewer rights, and it looked like we weren't coming there for a long time, and we gave them up. I don't know if they are still available, but we'd be, have to investigate that. Mm. Uh, we do have a tower there, and if you know the location at all, I think we max out at 70 feet because of the airport, mm. sort of at the end of the runway. Why would we have given up the sewer line? Because we didn't know when we were going to build again. Okay. Yes. On site or municipal? We were looking at municipal, Oscar. So you were looking for capacity? Yes. Wayne? So the, the flooding, is, it's not near a stream, is it just. Oh, no, the, the, the existing facility is very close to a stream. It is not in the um, flood plain. However, because where it's located, Route 70 is the state drive of where they come off of. There's the river. I forget the name of um, Otter Creek, I believe, is what it is. And then once you cross the bridge, you're in the property. But uh, during Irene, it was an island. So they couldn't get to or out of that. And that is the problem. So it's not technically, as the commissioner said, uh, in a floodplain. However, it Last flat floodplain. You just can't get there from here at certain times. So it's in the flood, probably in the it's not in the, No, it is not, but yeah. you can't get there. That's the back of the cow. That's where the line is drawn. Correct. 
it has it's not. It's a flooded. fluvial erosion zone. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh, we live that. So the one million in FY twenty five is to go out to bid. Yes, have your uh, construction documents or permits complete, being ready to go to bid. He's freaking out. Water creeks down there somewhere. <laughs> so when are you getting the pump out? If we move, we don't need it. Okay. <laughs> and what would happen <clears throat> to the barracks that we're in now? <clears throat> Would we sell that? <clears throat> AOT is also on that complex. DMV is in, in the complex also. So I don't know if we would go to sell it or if they needed space, we would have to investigate that. We've not looked into that. Huh. Okay. Anything else? John? Just out of curiosity, what's what about West, uh, Westminster coming at for dollars? Looks like it was around seven million. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. That this was... is a smaller facility. Westminster also has complete PSAP. So out of the two of the states, one in Williston, mm -hmm. one in Westminster. So this will not have that expanded space for PSAP. So okay. public safety is important. Yeah, but oh, you're talking <laughs> Williston, the size. or are you talking Williston or Westminster? Clarendon. And I know, so the but the cost should be cheaper at Clarendon because cheaper it's than Westminster. But that's not yeah. what's showing up. What's showing up is fourteen plus million, more, more like fifteen million. Inflation. I mean, Westminster. We finished that um, back in two thousand six. And we was it that far? No, it could be. We started. When did it, we finish it? Was two thousand? We put it off. For Irene, was yes. minister, and we finished it. It must have been what 2015, 16. Yeah, ballpark. But if you go to the Excel spreadsheet, go to your book. The 14 million is for use of hazmat, and the 6.25 million for the wetland facility. Because I'm looking editors, at the chart in the book, and I know editors who helped put the book together at the last minute. Uh, do I say you, you let go or you want to keep it going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm rush at the end. So it's 7.8 million. Say if you got a direct you go. It's about 6.2 million. No. 6.2 6 construction, 1.25 for uh, design. It's about 8 million total. That's what it shows on the spreadsheet. For total project cost. It's about eight million for the Rutland Field Station. Questions? So this is the one that's next in line, and what we do for our state police. Oh, cake, I knew you'd come down. <laughs> We're gonna have a committee. Did you bring down did you bring down Scott or did you bring down um, Sarah? Everybody's upstairs. They're still doing stuff. I came down to the exciting <laughs> They're talking about the so it means you have to sing happy birthday. By yourself oh, no. by myself. <laughs> to a man. Talking about the replacement oh, of the Rutland. State Police Barracks in Clarendon. What? It's There's not a local interest. <laughs> it's not happening. Any, anything else? And what, what, basically the buildings are all built the same with a yes. few changes here and there. And we there will have, be some changes because there's a new energy code that we have to work with. So, you know, mainly more insulation, probably mm -hmm. the walls and the roof. But other than that, the shape of it, the H style, Shape is going to remain the same. Same design, too. Now, if we go out to bid for that, probably the same. You don't know. <laughs> Any, change for real estate. Anything else on this one or the previous one? Okay, thank you. Thank you, folks from Department of Public Safety and Michael DeRosier.
Um, we will be doing markup and we might ask you back. We're just not sure yet. Thank, Thank you, Madam Chair. It's been a pleasure and happy birthday once again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So let's Bye-bye. take a break because um, we've got AOT coming in, but let's get off of YouTube a little bit. Take another break here real quick.